Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Dustin. I am Pete. And we have three great comics to talk to you guys about today. We're going to talk about Battle for the Cow, number three, Fantastic Four, number 566, and Invincible, number 62. So let's get right into it with Battle for the Cow, number yeah. three. Guys, this okay. is the uh, action packed conclusion. How I Battle did. for Battle the Cow. Over. Battle is over. It's Somebody over. won the cow. We're going to spoil it for you in five, four, Three, you already know two, who it is. It's Nightwing. Don't it's worry. Nightwing. Don't yeah. even it's read it. one of the Robins. They did it. Yeah, one they of finally them, did it. One of the uh, sidekicks really made it happen. They stepped up. They fought each other, all of them. It wasn't the little guy who was really annoying. It was one of the older ones who seemed to uh, be the best. One of the yeah, older or ones. Or, in summary, in summary, uh, Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down what'd you guys think about this issue? I mean, this whole series just seems it's so obvious that the villain's chasing Todd and that Nightwing is going to become Batman, and that's what happened. So it's like, what but was don't he you even feel like point? he earned it because he beat no. up all the other Robins? They really <laughs> earned it. Here, here's my biggest problem with the series. Actually, I would have had no problem with the idea of a three issue miniseries, which was Nightwing wrestling with the idea of I don't want to be Batman. Yeah. If that was the focus of the series, and it was his emotional journey to final put on the cow, right. but it felt like there was all this misdirection going on. I know with the last issue, I was like, yeah. it can't be that the other bad Batman can't be Jason Todd because he's never responded to anybody being like, you're Jason, yeah. and he's never taken off his mask. And Plus, then, Jason Todd has been kind of a good guy. Yeah, in, and then it turns out that Jason universe. Todd is suddenly snapped and is crazy, and this is Jason Todd evil. Again, yeah. spoiler. Which feels like a totally random, okay. unnecessary thing to happen. It feels like maybe they had more twists planned that they scuttled or but something. But then, like, like that. and then you see like Tim Drake is like dead, and the last issue it's like he's dead, he's dead, he's definitely dead. And it's like I can't believe him, he's dead. Blah, blah. And it's like of course he's not dead, right? And then he gives this whole speech dead. to absolutely nobody in a cave, being like, yeah. oh. Thank God that they were small pieces of shrapnel and I yeah. was wearing a Billy Poop vest. I owe you one, Bruce. Yeah. So. so here's the thing. I was, as I was reading this, I was thinking, you know what would have been a great way to do this? Is have each of each of the three of them want to be Batman and then like have uh, the three of them kind of do it and see how that happened. Right. With this, it was like none of them wanted to do it. And then it was just like, well, I guess I'll do it. Because you are crazy and you just got killed almost. I would have liked if That's Alfred terrible. lined them all up and then put them to, through a couple of tests. What kind of tests? Written like and they, physical. Like sized up. And then yeah, they like they sized like up some more. Yeah, yeah, and if they passed everything, he's voted one in. That hey, was what? it. What? I don't... I don't even know what that meant. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> he voted uh, one in. Would you uh, say pick this up? Uh, it's an unnecessary series, and it, whatever is going to happen next, that you you don't need to read this to get there. Yeah. Just had Plus, uh, Dan DiDio has already spoiled the fact that uh, the corpse that Bat uh, Superman was holding at the end of Final Crisis wasn't Batman. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Classic DiDio. Unbelievable. Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Ooh. And I was like dressed in a two. Get a toupee. So. Get a toupee. Whoa! Wow. wow. Dude, don't be like that. Wow. Don't be like that. I mean, I agree. Wow. 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 Finally, he's proud said, of the fact that he's bald. Let him, you know. Let's well, I might be proud. Talk about a bald yeah, ambition I'm... with Fantastic Four number 566. Finally, after 70,000 years, the Masters of Doom are revealed. I remember back when I read Fantastic Four number one. Yeah, and Stanley right. and Jack Kirby first teased the Masters of Doom. Yes. Yeah, Finally, the people badass enough to take down Doom have been revealed and they have really bad teeth. Yeah. Well. What uh, what you guys think about this issue? I, I actually like this issue. This is one of the first ones that I really liked uh, from the uh, the Miller Hitch team. Uh, and I know it's cheesy, and I usually all the shit they're doing, Old Man Logan. I'm like, oh, it's terrible. But when the Watcher was right. dead, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like the idea of the dead Watcher. That was certainly fun. Yeah. But uh, my problem with this is, it seems like the entire arc of the series has been. The only way Miller can show how badass his villain his villains are are by beating up Doctor Doom. Yeah, it's Across true. The world, they had the uh, Defenders beat up Doctor Doom. Yeah. Then they have these guys beat up Doctor Doom. Yeah. Uh, I, I just can't care about it anymore because I know Doom's not going to die just like the Fantastic Four is not going to die. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. What you're talking about uh, the Red Hulk punched out the Watcher. Uh, and that's why he's laying there. I love it. It was all worth it for the one line in here where Dr. Doom's just getting back to Latveria and um, he turns to one of his like aides and it's like, 
the first man that stops clapping, clapping. Yeah. I want to drag down and shot. I was yeah. like, yeah, he does! <laughs> I don't, it, look, look I, I, don't get me wrong, I don't have a big problem with this, but it just feels so light and unnecessary I, to me when it feels like Mark Millar and Brian Hitch together should feel epic. Yeah. You know, the way Ultimate Avengers feels, the way uh, the authority feels. Yeah. It, all that stuff. And this just doesn't, it feels like light fun. It I, does. And it feels like they're, they've had a couple ideas and then they're just kind of filling in between. Like, we're yeah. like, watch her dead. Cool. That'll be the first half. And then eventually we'll see this guy with like teeth. Uh, and then, like, it's like, oh, and then we'll just have some fun flying and whatnot. I just feel that, like, it's really weird to see Doom, like, kiss somebody else's ass and be, you know, like, Doom has always just been, to me, like, you know, he praises no one. Yeah. He, you know, everybody should bow around him. He'll shoot whoever stops clapping. I love that moment. Yeah. And I was just, I didn't, I was like, ah. Well, that's why I thought it was also like funny it. in this issue when, like, the, the Doom's masters show up and they're like, you're bad at your job. And he's like. No, it's just that to do. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, well, uh, I think they're going to continue so to say you would say pick it up, right? I liked it, yeah. It's worth picking up. Pete. Especially this runs when it's so disappointing. The art is fantastic, though. Yeah. I mean, it is worth it, pretty much, for Brian H. So, uh, last but not least, we are going to talk about Invincible number 60. What? Talk about light on... Using, this is light. This comic, at the end, on the in short of the letters page, he's like... Now, a lot of people complain about, like, my comics not having a lot of, like, dialogue and being really short. This and this one, one like, it's, it, it, it's true. It for you. Yes. Uh, from time to time, I hear the complaint. It took me five minutes to read this issue. I'll admit that really bugs me because, well, it's kind of insulting to the artist. No matter how little dialogue there is in any given comment, if you're reading the thing properly, you shouldn't be able to simply look at the art and read nothing in five minutes. I mean, how would you even follow along? It's maddening. And I gotta say, this took me, like, max three minutes to read. Yeah. And it was... Uh, unnecessary and ridiculous. I don't understand. I don't understand what you've done. This took me an hour and a half to read. <laughs> if you look at it, like each panel, I mean, look at the first one here. It's a big splash page, but you have to look at all the detail in the background. To be fair, to be fair, this is, uh, is Cory Wong. No, it's Ryan Hopley. Right 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 and and the, art, the art is Ryan spectacular. Ryan Hopley kicks ass in this yeah. issue, absolutely. Kirkman is opening himself a little bit for mocking by putting that in the back of the issue. Um... This feels a little overwrought and overdone to me. Uh, I love the Viltrumite stuff in, yeah. throughout the series. I just wish this particular character wasn't out of nowhere. It yeah, he, he introduces him like last issue or at the end of two issues ago. And then you're like, you don't, why are you supposed to care about this guy? He's just like a more badass Viltrumite? I don't know. Because yeah. he has a scar on his face? Like, I, I guess. guess. I just, they're horrifying as it is, and it just feels like this is a little unnecessary extra step. Exactly, and I don't know, I, this seems, and the, up until the end, and even this is unnecessary when, uh, what's his name, the guy that runs the Pentagon, shows up and he's like, can we, like, help him meet this guy? And they're like, we're gonna take a couple of weeks. This issue went by so fast, we haven't finished building the uh, robot <laughs> Invincible, so... Uh, but, the, the fight scene does a great job. It's one whole... <laughs> comic of one fight scene, but there is serious weight to it. It, it takes... What weight? It's a yeah. big guy no, 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 punching! No, no, no. Let, me, let me finish. Uh, I mean, they're, first of all, they're battling on Grom that's already destroyed, and he's always already feels bad about it, and they're trashing him more, and there's a weight to that, like, oh, get it off planet, get it off planet. I guess. I feel like if it's already destroyed, it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, well, when the I mean, building fell, and then I was they're like... They're trying to fix it, and then they break it again. It's like, oh, come on. I just, like, I just you find it frustrating from a like, logistic no, no, like, no, saying It's like the time I punched you through that used car. It wasn't yeah. a big deal. Yeah, it's right. not a big deal. That's no, why no, you guys no. were able to become friends again. It, no, because no. it's like, it's a used car. Yeah. No, but it's I'm, a used car. But it was I'm, like 200 bucks. But no. I'm saying he's losing. And, you know, it's 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 showing his weakness. And, you know, when his right. mother flies in. You know, no, I don't know if he's going to come back. So you would say pick it up, right? If I could have explained myself, yes, I wouldn't say pick it up. Keep talking. Well, I just know nope, we're out of time. If you have a question, <laughs> you can write us at the comic book club at yahoo.com. People are going to comment about all that. Of your responses. Check out our blog, popcultureshot.com, so CB Club, where you can read Pete's whole essay about Invincible. Uh, it's about 700 to 1,000 words, really interesting. If only YouTube would let us go longer. They're the real assholes here. God, you're not all interrupting Justin and uh, the way talks a lot out. The way getting to people to watch your show is by calling them assholes. Like, I think that's what I've learned today. What do you guys think? Who, YouTube? Yeah, if you're ever in no, New I York. No, I said the organization YouTube. Oh, okay. If you're ever in New York. Uh, kiss one of these guys in the ass. So. In the ass? Yeah. I don't know if that's how it works. If you would like to crawl up my asshole and kiss me inside of it, I would love to have you with it. Great tag. Ah!
classic tech. <laughs>